Hello there YouTube, Devin here again. Um, today, we're gonna have a video based on something that you've all seen on the channel before actually. That's on helmets. And uh, this is gonna kind of be a continuation of that um, video that I did called uh, World War One Rifles, why they are the way they are. And uh, this is going to be on helmets. And this video is going to be posed because you know you know who you are in the comments here. Um, but I've been having a, a commenting with this guy uh, who left a comment on my videos about why um, why were modern combat helmets what what defines a modern combat helmet basically is what it came down to. And I had to have a kind of a long hard think about that and think about the simplest way to go because I was talking about um, the um, the helmet that came before the stall helmet. I did a video on it. I don't remember what it's called, but it's basically a huge brow plate and has a little nose guard that comes out. It's real thick steel. And I was like, this is Germany's technically by modern definition first combat helmet. Uh, I didn't dig that out. I should have, unfortunately. Um, didn't dig that out, but I got some right over here to show you. And he was like, well, wasn't Germany's first helmet the pickle hub? And I was like, well, if we're looking at linear time, and if a helmet's a helmet's a helmet, you know, for military use, it goes all the way back to Roman times. Roman, you know, where there was German tribesmen who joined the Roman legions, technically their first mass-issued helmet would have been the Roman-type helmet uh, that was used of that era that they joined the military. In. That would have been their first helmet, if we're going by that definition. Um, but the mo first modern combat helmets kind of appeared in World War One, and what makes those helmets different from all other kinds of helmets, like what makes the Stahlhelm different from the Pickelhaube, is what it was designed to do. Okay, so there's been helmets throughout the ages, you know, going all the way back to medieval knights helmets and stuff, and the Pickelhaube included, where its primary objective was to defeat sword blows. Okay, and that's why the pickle hob uh, was that very thick boiled leather and why it had all those um, little uh, ridges and that big huge badge on it. That wasn't just decorative, that was to help deflect sword blows because all that a uh, person on a horse like a cavalryman really had to do was he didn't even really need to swing his sword. He was going fast enough to where he could just clip you in the head and probably fracture your skull. And uh, he, that way he doesn't need to waste a ton of energy, he can keep his eyes on, you know, other stuff going on around him. And, you know, he's not, you know, just swinging and stabbing away. And, you know, if you're swinging and stabbing away, there's a very good chance you could hit a friendly personnel who's on the ground. A very good chance you could hit somebody else's horse or your own horse. You never know what your horse is going to do. A horse, of course, is a creature with a mind of its own. So a lot of times they're doing little light swings, you know, or just clipping people using the fact that a horse can run, you know, damn near 40 miles an hour, hitting you with a sharp-edged instrument. So a pickle hob, along with a lot of medieval helmets, was designed to defeat sword blows, which is why it was terrible for World War I, and why the definition of a modern combat helmet, and it still stands to all combat helmets today, um, that are now just starting to be phased out. They're going to be around for a while. But the definition of a, uh, what I would consider a modern combat helmet, is a helmet designed to defeat shrapnel. Okay? And so now we got to explain what shrapnel is because I'm trying to make this just as easy as possible for anybody who has no idea or maybe they're just learning or just starting collecting. All right, now shrapnel, by definition, is debris thrown by an explosion, okay? It doesn't need to be metal. Um, it can be dirt. It can be pieces of wood. It can be pieces of people. It can be bone. It can be... Uh, limbs, it can be bits of animals, it can be fence posts, it can be barbed wire, and shrapnel also encompasses the actual composition of that bomb. So most like artillery shells, for instance, during World War I, helmets were made in response to developments in artillery. They would take sh artillery shells and fill them with all sorts of, you know, nasty objects, hunks of metal, uh, darts, um, metal balls, all right, in the explosive itself. And then the outside of the artillery shell is also metal, which 
turns into all these little tiny fragments moving faster than the speed of sound when it explodes. And they throw out this huge shower of metal, this huge storm of steel, and that was killing people. You know, and uh, there was plenty of troops that went into World War One wearing helmets that weren't good enough. So you look at the the um, Germans, a prime example, the Pickelhaupt. That leather did not stop shrapnel at all. It went sailed right through it, like he wasn't even wearing it. And in 1916, they came out with the Stahlhelm design. This is actually a 1918 Stahlhelm, and it's missing the liner, but this is an actual World War I produced Stahlhelm. And this helped to protect the soldier's head from that shrapnel. And it can be a bit of an issue um, dealing with that, because, you know, where, where do you draw the definition of that? But that's what I define a modern combat helmet as, as a piece of protective headgear designed to stop shrapnel and that includes today's helmets like the uh the american ach which is the standard uh mass issued combat helmet to u.s personnel that technically isn't a bulletproof helmet it's just designed to stop shrapnel like a lot of people think that these helmets and they have stories you know every helmet has stories of bullets bouncing off of it and deflecting off of it and all this other stuff and you know stopping it there's plenty of stories out there but that's not what the helmet's designed to do uh, helmets vary just recently, all right, and a few examples in the past, but they're really almost too heavy to bear wearing for long periods of time. So helmets just recently have now started going into a new definition of what a combat helmet should be, and that is a helmet that is literally designed to stop bullets. But for the most part, most helmets issued since World War One are only in, in into today are only designed to stop shrapnel, and that's why you see, you know, this is a French Adrian. Got the uh, chassis, the chassis um, pin on it. So oh, there's the liner. It's actually an M26. So that's what defines a modern combat helmet. So technically, yes, Germany's first helmet that they were going into World War One with, the Pickle Hub, was a helmet, but it wasn't by the standards of the time and even of the day considered a modern combat helmet. The Germans knew that it was designed to only stop shrapnel, it wouldn't stop a bullet. I mean, sorry, it only stop sword blows, it wouldn't stop shrapnel, it wouldn't stop a bullet, or anything like that. And that's that's what it was kind of known for. So, and then every country has their own designs, like the Brody helmet here, this is actually a Mark II, but the still state, still shell shape stayed the same um, between World War One and World War II. And uh, this helmet um, I, has a lot of its own videos that it's in. And uh, I have tons of videos on Stahlhelms and the pros and cons of that shape. And I've also got videos on the Adrians and the pros and cons of that shape. And uh, why all these countries developed these helmets and what they were actually there for. And how they actually almost didn't exist. They almost went away very quickly based on um, the casualty reports from World War I. Um, during World War I, uh, casualty reports were, you know, through the roof. Uh, for people dying from head injuries. So that's why they developed these helmets. And then when you just go back and look at the numbers, like after these helmets were being mass issued, and these generals go back and look at these numbers, and they're like, nothing changed because casualties were still incredibly high. But if you broke it down, uh, the number of deaths went down and the number of injuries went up. So it, it stayed the same, but a lot more people were living. And that's what the helmet was designed to do, protect the soldier from all these head injuries, all the shrapnel, because if you catch a fence post moving the speed of sound into your face, it's going to kill you. And if you have a helmet, you might live. Um, you might, you know, historically, there's a lot of helmets that didn't stop shrapnel. You get a big enough piece moving fast enough, it, it'll go right through it still. You, a bullet will go right through it, a helmet, but it's going to stop a lot of what was giving these soldiers injuries, which is dirt and debris raining down on top of them. So... Uh, that is what a what I believe constitutes the definition of a of a modern combat helmet. I haven't actually defined that on the channel before, so it was actually very good that I had time to think about, sit down and think about this and how to come up with that simple definition of what defines a modern combat helmet, and that is a helmet designed to stop shrapnel. That's what I would break it down, just like uh, in my World War One rifle videos. Why? Uh, why they were the way they were, because soldiers were expecting World War One to be like the Franco-Prussian War and like the American Civil War. That's why they were the way they were.
So thank you so much for watching guys. Hopefully I'll see you all in the next video and hopefully this is a, you know, maybe answers a question you weren't so sure about or maybe you weren't 100% uh, sure about or maybe you have a slightly different definition. I'd, lo I'd love to hear what your definition of what a modern combat helmet would be because I think this is a very simple definition of what a modern combat helmet should be that encompasses pretty much everything since World War One. So thank you all for stopping by. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful new year. I'm going to go uh, hopefully party it up tonight and uh, I'll see you all next year. Thank you all so much for the support you've given me too. It means a lot.